Welcome to the Legs Matter Lounge. My name is Leanne and I'm the Communications Manager at LNR UK. Today with me are Kate Williams, Wound Clinical Nurse Specialist and TVS Trustee, and Helen Rogers, Brand Manager for LNR's Compression Range. Today, LNR are hosting a session on Squeezing, our new supported self care campaign to help empower people to manage their leg health, to support improved outcomes and release nursing time back to care. We'll be now be showing a short video about squeezing. Hi, my name's Leanne and I'm the Communications Manager here at LNR UK. Today I want to talk to you about LNR's new campaign called Squeeze In. Squeeze In provides people with leg conditions the motivation, knowledge and guidance to manage their leg health, which in turn increases patient adherence to their treatment and releases your time back to care. Squeeze In will aim to increase the number of patients looking after their legs and decrease the impact on their lives and the NHS. It will do this by highlighting small changes that we can all squeeze in to significantly improve our lives. So why now? The need for the NHS to embrace a self-care agenda for conditions such as venous leg ulceration is critical to free up vital resource and address the challenge that social isolation presents on delivery of ongoing care. We approached Johnny Vegas on the Squeeze In campaign to see if he would support it and he shared his own experience of helping his dad with his venous leg ulcer. Johnny said that, later in life, poor circulation meant that my dad's mobility suffered, but equally for someone so seemingly carefree, so did his self-confidence. Despite surviving an aneurysm and beating cancer and being open in doing so, the condition of his legs was not for discussion. Any query, comment or attempt to lighten the discomfort of this particular challenge was considered by him to be a bit too below the belt. As a staunch ambassador of wearing socks with sandals on holiday, I thought my dad had peaked in terms of leg embarrassment. Body shame was something I never thought I would associate with him. It became obvious that he felt that it was a stigma. Given his own experience, Johnny is keen to eradicate this stigma by promoting healthy conversation as well as healthy living and self-care. Of equal importance, he said that the need to reassure people with venous leg ulcers that they are not a burden and that seeking medical care is a crucial step in managing the condition. Johnny also said, please don't take the attitude that you can just walk it off or try to forget about it. Visit your doctor, ask for help. Addressing issues early will really help in giving you tips on how you can work preventative measures into your daily routine. It's like running a car. If you run it into the ground, it can often be too late to fix it. We are extremely proud to work with Johnny Vegas on the squeezing campaign to raise awareness of leg conditions and to better equip patients and nurses to self-care. Signpost your patients with leg conditions to join Club Squeezing today by visiting www.squeezein.life. Here they will receive our personalised email newsletter to help them manage their leg health, including hints and tips from Johnny Vegas, our squeezing ambassador. They will also have access to a healthy living booklet. The booklet is an informative and easy to use guide aimed at helping people who are managing venous leg ulcers to squeeze in healthier living. The healthy living booklet explores ways in which patients, their families and carers can manage their condition more effectively. It covers skin care, compression, healthy eating, including a meal plan, tips for squeezing in movement and exercise, and the value of maintaining social contact, be it in virtual or in person. Join Club Squeeze In today as a healthcare professional, and you will have access to a self-care resource pack, a waiting room pack, your copy of the Healthy Living Booklet, and access to our personalized Club Squeeze In emails. If you have any further questions, please get in contact with our Customer Solutions team. Thank you, Leanne. That's really interesting. Um, it's so useful to have a famous face alongside a campaign just for any, for any public health message. It just catches people's eyes, doesn't it? He is so amazing. I can't, like, we worked with him quite recently. We actually got to meet him and even all this craziness with the lockdown, we couldn't believe we actually got to meet him face to face. And he is such an ambassador for this. And he's so, so passionate about raising awareness of leg conditions. He is also starting to see some of the things that were happening to his dad happen to himself as well. So he said it's almost like a kind of a look into the future with his dad. 
and he's kind of worried about his own leg health and he's, he's, he's kind of putting it to the back of his mind. So he really wants to make sure he's bringing it to the front of his mind and thinking about ways that he can really prevent his condition getting worse. So I feel like we've got some couple of videos that we really wanted to show in this session, but I think they're going to be probably in the next couple of weeks where he does quite an honest letter, letter to his dad and quite an honest interview to, with his dad, like as if his dad was in the room and talks about what he would like to do to kind of prevent his condition getting worse as well. Um, but he, I hope, I'm hoping that he continues to fly the flag for what we're doing and to really raise awareness of Legs Matter as well and what you guys are doing as well, which is really exciting. Yeah, cause I think a lot of people resonate with a lot of people in that they can see their parents' legs or memories of their parents' legs or grandparents' legs and then the realisation that they really need to look after their own legs as well. Yeah, I think uh, he, I think he would always talk about as well how he was quite um he was he his relationship with his dad he could he always says that his dad was quite held back on talking about his legs he'd talk about everything else that was wrong with him but he would never really want to talk about his legs he always says that um they were always a kind of an embarrassment for him and he was always quite reluctant to talk about them um so I think that having someone like Johnny really speak about them quite loudly um the will really raise the platform of them hopefully in the next coming weeks and months when he continues to fly the flag for and raise awareness for lower limb conditions which is quite exciting yeah i know <laughs> on um the legs matter lounge we've got a patient telling her story and it's really moving and i'd recommend everybody to watch it because it's just really understanding things from the patient's perspective um it's it's really moving Let's have a look. We've got a few questions coming in, if that's all right. Ooh. Yeah. So, question. In terms of what's provided in the packs, can you tell me a little more about this in terms of what type of information is in there for patients? So, Helen, so the, the packs are, there's two packs. We have a waiting room pack and a uh, self-care resource pack. Helen, do you want to talk about the waiting room pack and I'll take the self-care <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I'd love to. So we've got the waiting room pack, which is quite a new pack that we've just uh, launched. Um, and it's absolutely fabulous. So what we've got in there is two wall posters. So um, they can obviously go on the wall and they're really quite loud and bold and bright and simple uh, to be eye catching. So encouraging people to start checking their legs. So even if they are in a uh, waiting room or a treatment room setting for a different thing, it is getting them to start thinking about, oh, actually, I recognise those signs on my legs, which is something I start doing. And I was never aware of that legs were so important um, until I started learning more about it. And now I'm constantly banging on about it. My friend gets so bored of me. Um, but that's what they post the design for, to start getting people to think about that. Um, and then also in the packs as well, there are leaflets that can be given out to patients, which with more information around leg health tips, um, advice around exercises, signs to look out for, and also um, a, how they can see, seek help. And they can be used for clinicians to go out to patients, um, you know, who, ha who are there for maybe their leg health, or, but also for other things as well, to really start dri driving that awareness and that action um, coming from the patient and giving the confidence to do that, which is so important. So that's the waiting room packs and they're accessible via the sign up to squeeze in. So I'll hand over to Leanne about what's in the squeeze in pack. So in the kind of self-care squeeze in pack, there's resources both for clinicians and patients in that. So for clinicians, it's got all the tools that you might need to support with measuring for kind of self-care solutions, whether that's like also hosiery kits, a hosiery range and ready wrap. Um, but it's also got quite a nice referral sheet in there that you can kind of work through with your patient and say, look at kind of some of the things that you kind of want to work on as a patient and healthcare professional relationship, whether that's encouraging them to move more, apply more their skin themselves, looking after their skin themselves, uh, eating better. And you can kind of write some of those goals down with your patient and then refer them on to squeeze in so they can sign up and get their access to their healthy living booklet as well. So they're the two kind of packs. We suggest that you get them both so you've got the best of both worlds for there. But that's kind of included what's included in both of those packs as well. Is there any order to people with sight problems? We are looking at this. So, so again, for the sorry. Johnny Vegas videos, we're going to get the subtitles all increased onto the onto the content. We can definitely because both of the because the healthy living booklet is a digital tool, you can actually zoom in on it quite nicely. 
but um there's there's definitely some things we could do on get some maybe you could read it and listen to it instead maybe turn it into a nice podcast that would be brilliant wouldn't it yes <laughs> yes it's fabulous <laughs> so we've had some other questions coming in and um, sometimes it's difficult to motivate people to make change managing conditions and we've been asked is there any tips on how we do it I think from a clinical perspective, it can be really difficult to motivate some people when you're talking about self-care. Um, sometimes it's the relatives that might be delivering the care. Um, sometimes the patient's doing it to themselves. But I think when you, it's like with any, with a hospital admission, for example, when someone goes into hospital, the, the minute you go in, they're planning how to get you home safely. So it should be the same with leg care. So the minute a clinician is over somebody's leg, you need to be thinking, how can we get this person independent? Because this is a chronic condition. And the more people understand their own condition and how they can look after it themselves, the more likely to they'll have success for their entire lives, not just for the period where they're going to see a nurse or having a nurse visit them. But um, for me, it's about sowing those seeds really early on for the people who are more reluctant, sometimes we have to sell it. Sell yeah. the benefits, the advantages. It's not just the advantages to the clinicians, it's the advantages to the patients, their confidence, um, their independence, um, their knowledge levels. So we just need to sell it. And there's always going to be people who are really keen, not so keen, absolutely not. So it's just working with people in their own personal circumstances really. So can, do you mind if I ask Kay, is there anything there that you particularly um, would find that sort of is always a sort of a good go-to in terms of selling it is it really breaking it down and giving the information or is there any like key tips you can give around how you would actually impart that information with the to the it patient? It depends really from experience I'd always test the water um, some people are really nervous they're afraid mm. of doing it will it get embarrassed? am I allowed to touch yeah. it genuine concerns and um, it takes time to reassure people that no it's fine you can do it yourself and teach them and support them it's really not just a case of you can do that yourself you just do it like this we'll we'll see you later it's it can't be like that it's we've got to support people and they've got to see the benefits to themselves as an individual absolutely yeah and having those small games yeah yeah they're just independent they're not tied to health professional appointments or people coming to see them at home and it's um but it is selling it it's difficult because some patients or family members might be keen and then other relatives might talk them out of it after you've left so it's <laughs> it's all people have just got genuine concerns nobody's trying to be difficult it's no in concerns and we can so it sounds like as well it's really key to um talk to the whole family as well and make them understand the care and network as well so everyone gets the information so everyone understands that the the benefits of it I guess you're saying as well that sounds you know so it's the the carer and the the partner whoever it might be are all involved in that communication yeah that they understand yeah they all usually have the same concerns um a lot of patients concerns about can I physically manage can my husband physically manage um will it get infected if I do it so these are the kind of concerns that they have and then the concerns that family members who I might never meet and um, we can yeah. just need to give them enough information so they're confident to say no I can do this this is better I think, that, I think that's the really key part isn't it making sure that they have that education and that kind of supportive information so when they're at home and they kind of don't forget about everything you said and they put it in front of them to go oh I need to do this every day to really support me and to really see a, a change and an improvement um but I do think that's definitely key yeah I always I always know if I go to a, a, an appointment there's a lot of information that you're taking in at the time as well as that so I think the the takeaway information or things that people can digest at home sounds really important where they can just think and, and think about it rather than having all the information coming at them at once um and kind of getting a bit overwhelmed perhaps so yeah great it's hard to remember as a, as a human, you've got a busy life, it's hard to remember. If someone's giving you so much information at one time, you do need to hear it a few times. Yeah. <laughs> someone's yeah. asked on the chat about peer support. That's so important if you can get mm -hmm. people 
And the leg club model particularly is really useful for that because people can see what other people are going through. They can chat about their legs, chat about what they found useful, sharing tips and hints. So, yeah, yeah. What, what we're trying to build as well is, and we've already got some really great examples of this, is kind of like testimonials that come in from people using the tools that we've kind of created with the squeezing campaign. So people can see how even just doing some of these really simple things is really supporting them. So that is something we're kind of building as we go along as well to be able to share people what impact this could have on their lives if they kind of do some of these small changes and work them into their daily routine as well. Yeah. And so I think that's such an important part of people. They're going to want a bit of that pie if they see someone else kind of seeing the positive outcomes of what they're kind of doing. Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think for clinicians, it's the same as well, because um in Leeds, we're fortunate enough to have a team of self-management facilitators is their job title. And hosiery oh, yeah. is part of their role, as well as many other things. But when, when you speak to those clinicians and you can hear the joy that they've had yeah. working with somebody who was really struggling with hosiery, hated the hosiery, didn't want it, go away. But over time, they work with them, they chat with them, they try different things. And the when they get the successes, it's really, really lovely and they get yeah. some satisfaction. But um, to get to the stage where all clinicians are like that, there, there will be some challenges. Um, some people, some nurses are so busy that they don't, it's just taking that time to think, could they do this themselves? Mm -hmm. Or family members do it. So there was an example of a patient who um, I saw with some district nurses and he's, daughter brought a basin of water to wash his legs his daughter brought the bandages his daughter and when I asked him do you fancy learning how to how to do this she just went yeah <laughs> amazing. yeah amazing she'd watched it done so many times she nailed yeah. it and um, <laughs> just asking that question yeah just giving that opportunity to learn and asking that question yeah <laughs> off and think actually do you fancy carers and family members I've, can have such an impact on patients life to be able to do that for them it's just I think they're going to feel, feel it much more comfortable if someone they know is going to be doing it really it's just yeah such a good yeah. resource to have those, those people there for you as well and there are some clinicians who might be reluctant to teach family members to apply a compression bandage for example but in my experience if you pick the right relatives and the right patient, then it can be such success, almost to the stage where when the nurses do go, it's quite intimidating. <laughs> and they know how it needs to be done and they, <laughs> and they want to make sure you're doing it right, thank you. Good. <laughs> 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 around with the red pen. <laughs> quite nerve-wracking. <laughs> some of these families, because they're so good at it. They only oh. have one leg, and they don't just yeah care for the patients, but they love them. This is their loved one, and they want yeah them. yeah they see every yeah. change. They know the limb so well, so it really it really helps. But for clinicians, it can perfect. be perfect. So, mm -hmm. Had some more questions too. I'll just have a quick check. So one is from a podiatrist. Some online support for clinicians and patients would be great. So there's loads of um, resources on yeah. the website absolutely loads and i know all the videos from this week will be available uh, through youtube from my best knowledge so yep. all the videos will be available to watch um after the legs matter week so there's so much useful public health information on the videos and so much useful public health information on the legs matter website and um, i'd always sign post patients to there they'll find out and if there's something on there that or if there's something missing from there, is what I meant to say, then please just let us know. We can soon resolve that. We try and cover everything, but we're not perfect. So there's also, <laughs> um, someone's asked about um, different conditions on the Legs Matter website. You can download and print off leaflets for a variety of lower limb conditions so that when you, for clinicians who are in practice, they can print off the leaflets and hand to the patients. Or if the patient's um, on the internet, they can signpost them to the website to have a look themselves. But for us in a clinic setting, 
Um, a lot of our elderly patients aren't online, so we can easily print off the leaflets when it covers a whole host of um, lower limb conditions because we need, it's not just about the ulcers, we need no. to get the health promotion, preventative message about aching legs, early swelling, staining on your legs, varicose veins, all these things that um, if we can catch them early enough, it would be um, a huge benefit. Absolutely. It's all about prevention, isn't it? And getting people to notice that and not to think, oh, I'm getting old. My, my mum's, she's like, oh, I'm just, you know, she's very proactive, but she's just thinks of part of aging. So I'm there saying, no, it's about prevention and, you know, spotting those changes. And I think that, like I say, it's so important, isn't it, to, to, to be able to recognise that and just start seeing those early changes and, and getting it early and, like you say, hopefully, um, you know, it's the right care at the right time, isn't it? Just getting in there when you actually start noticing those changes happening. So mm -hmm. yeah, any information on that is fabulous. Yeah, I've had the same with my own place. Quite a cell. Took me a while to get yeah. <laughs> But I didn't, I would, you don't, you can't nag people or put them under pressure. It's no slow, gradual education thing, really, so that people want to either self-care or want to wear hosiery at all. And it's the same for patients and families. Mm. We don't want to put them under any pressure to self care. They've got to no. feel to be able to handle it themselves. Yeah. Yeah. So, any more questions? Um, question about prevention. It looks like we've mentioned that already. So, does the information in the squeezed in pack cover prevention, Liam? So the Healthy Living booklet doesn't, but the emails that we send out do. So if you do join Club Squeeze In, that does talk about prevention and some of the things that people can do to really prevent their condition getting worse, as well as treat their condition. But I would say the Healthy Living booklet is quite leg ulcer focused and lower limb focused, but there's definitely tips and hints and tips in there that can cover prevention as well. So kind of skincare, how to move, it has a full kind of list around some of the exercises, as well as some healthy eating recipes in there as well. And something that I think has been really quite important during definitely during lockdown is kind of encouraging that social interaction and not to feel so isolated and alone whilst you've got a leg condition. It's something that Johnny talks about quite a lot as well that is making sure you're reaching out to family people or getting active, still talking to people and not feeling locked away because of your condition as well. Um, so I think there's loads of tools within that that can be relative to anyone as well. But we are looking at developing some more quite preventative Kind of tools as well maybe next year which could be really supportive for people yeah, it would be so and the sorry <laughs> i was just gonna say the um the waiting room packs do um the leaflets on there do have some it's kind of more of a taking care of your legs element to that um so even though this, you know like leanne mentioned about the squeeze in um packs and the healthy living booklet the waiting room packs do have that which is getting um that absolutely that prevention message across so again people start looking at like the legs checking the legs and slight person towards getting some um, help around the legs as well. So, so yeah, there are um, there is information, you know, in, in those packs. They work quite nice, nicely together to, to give a rounded uh, support. Okay. So with the Johnny Vegas supporting your campaign, I wonder would he be less because there's such stigma around lower leg problems sometimes, a lot of time. Um, do you think he'd be less? Would he feel less stigma if he were to, when he like when he does talk about his leg problems that he's getting now, is stigma still a, a problem for him? Do you think? Yeah, he he does talk about it in the video. So there's, there's two, not to give too much away, but there's two videos. One's where it's a bit of a comedy, and he's in sort of his shorts doing some stretches in some compression, um, but then he says. <laughs> Kind of a bit more of an interview later on and in that interview he, he says to like basically when he's talking to us he's saying I didn't think I'd be like this but I was really ashamed about getting my legs out today I didn't want people to look at them and he, he still felt that stigma about getting his legs out but he feels like the only way that he can kind of eradicate that is to talk about it quite openly and publicly so that people aren't ashamed of it and, and kind of get the treatment as early as possible, which I think is a really beautiful message, especially for someone like Johnny to say, he's someone who you probably wouldn't instantly think would have kind of that embarrassment or shame because he's so out there. <laughs> um, so I think that's a really important message for him to share, definitely. It is. It was, 
dad that's in your book and it's so it's quite moving that his dad was so open about all his other health problems yeah. and legs yeah and then to think mm. that he still feels the stigma even though he was frustrated by his yeah his dad it's it's really interesting um, I think it's a perfect opportunity to mention the rest of the sessions. I know it's Thursday, nearly the end of Legs Matter Week, but these problems do not go away at the end of this week. Um, we know we've got so much work to do just to try and generally empower people to look after their legs. But there's some great sessions on this afternoon. I've already mentioned um, the chat with our lovely patient partner, Tracy, which is really moving. Um, and then there's loads of different sessions tomorrow. So it's just to really try and ask people to watch them and share them and come back to them after this week. It's not just for this week. So is there anything else you two would like to add? Uh, nothing extra from me, just to say that this video will obviously be available after this event as well. But that's it from me. Thank you for your time today and to be able to discuss this campaign with you. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. Anything from Yes, yeah, same from... No, same for me really. I've really enjoyed just having some time to have a little chat and, and raising the profile and the awareness of, on everything we can do. So I, I'm not going to lie, I was quite nervous because I've never done something before, <laughs> but um, I really enjoyed it. And I think we should all absolutely do more of it So and, and keep uh, and keep raising that, 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 that awareness level. So yeah, just thank you for your time and thank you everyone for, for dialing in. Great stuff. Thank you both. All right. Thank you.